Raw fusion. Okay, what you see is what you get. We're in the furthest tip of Europe. It's raw fusion. Peace. You put a baseline to that. And the thing about hip hop is it's generosity. Hip hop has given you the skills to, to put a baseline behind anything. Basically, when you break it down, it comes back together again. But it's a black American art form. It's had this culture, it's a black American art form, but the success of it is it, it, it took over America. It took over America on its own American terms. It took over America in terms of the market. And basically, with the way the world is now, you talk in American values. But the success of being a black art form and taking on white cultural capital America on its own terms and bettering it, the success story inherent in that, I think, is valid for everybody. That the Irish rap acts to date have bettered the American art form? I think the Irish rap acts to date don't actually care about the American art form anymore. They don't see it. They see it as fresh within themselves, you know. They did do their dues. Ten years ago, they knew who Africa Babat was. They knew how to break dance. They still do. They just don't go on about it, you know. And these are still kids that are 24 now. They've been here for 10 years. So, how would you distinguish Irish rap from American or any other? country's rap music. What are the distinguishing features in terms of lyrically? Lyrically, it's talking about, you could say this from France to Japan, lyrically they're talking about themselves. It's the beat of the bar on rather than the beat of the 808. But they can still program an 808 when they want. So, so they're talking about Irish things? They're talking about Irish things in a way that you two never talked about Ireland. They're talking about Irish things in terms that matter locally, culturally, talking about Ireland in terms of Ireland is a small country everybody knows everybody in Ireland and the beats of what groups like Scary Era, Ghost and Jay are coming out with they're talking like they're talking about your neighbours in a good way solidarity the best thing about black music like from reggae to rap is just solidarity and uh, people respect that you know in terms of music you mentioned the bar on um, does Irish rap music tend to sample Irish, and whereas the American will sample James Brown and P Funk? Are, will Irish sample yeah, well, Planksty? Yeah, well, I would, yeah, well, sample Planksty, sample Davy Spillane, uh, Christy Moore, but they'd be more into it now. The way I can see Direction Rap, they'd be more interested in getting actually Christy Moore to play for them rather than think. I look at, um, you say, a lot of African American kids would get into culture of Africa from Jungle Brothers come out and they put African yells and screams, beats from the jungle, you know. Um, over here we, we would have heard of Zimbabwe legit, things like that. Um, so basically I, I think you're going to see a lot of people getting interested in their culture, more interested in their culture. Um, with the nature of the media now, it's too much trouble to actually learn to find out about Northern Ireland for 12 year old kids, 14 year old kids. But if they, they hear a good beat and they hear a man just going over things, they get more into it. So it's a learning thing. Now rap music as an American art form definitely addresses and has the uh, struggle of the black underclass. So it would seem natural to me that in Northern Ireland, with the Catholics in particular, that there would be a lot of rap music, is there? You would get, um, you get, oh. there should be, there should be, but it, it, then again, it doesn't necessarily work like that. What you would get in, there's a very strong tradition of Republican songs. Um, most of them are very upfront, fist hand in the hand in the air kind of stuff, you know. And there's a, there's a sort of seriousness and mock seriousness associated with them. But um, English media has demonised anything that has, let's say, a flag on it or a fist or anything like that. And the slightest thing is put underground, you know. You have groups who are basically no more than show bands who sing about um, uh, the struggle or something like that, quite legitimately, and they're demonised, you know? So there will be a tendency to shy away from something. You look back at the punk explosion, uh, in, there was a great punk tradition from Northern Ireland, there was Catholics and Protestants, you had the outcasts, Stiff Little Fingers and stuff like that. What you will see, you will see something like that, I presume, it's probably even going on as we speak, but I see a lot of... Um, the unifying principle with music up the north, I think, is probably, it's probably rave at the moment. 
Ireland or techno or something like that, where you don't actually have to put a, a beat in thing. The th best thing about, I personally like about rap is that you have to confront who you are when you listen to it. Now, when you're uh, down here and you're listening, as you did back in the 80s, to Schoolie D, can you listen to it? Because a lot of people say it's urban music and you just have to listen to it in the urban setting. Yeah. At least that's the best thing and when you're in Oh, there. no, I don't agree with that at all. But that, is, that is completely ridiculous. Um, you can't, you can't just put Miles Davis playing in New York in a smoky club and leave him there, you know? It doesn't work like that. Um, I'm proud to be the age I am listening to it when it came out. So you'd be listening to Saturday Night and relating to it as you walk down the streets to kill someone? I listen to Saturday Night. I'd rather listen to the first one. Um, the first one is guy go, PSK, what the hell does that mean? I don't know what the hell it means, you know? You find out later it means Parkside Killers. And if Schooley was... Yeah, you listen to him, but you don't go, you don't listen to it like you watch a gangster video now. You listen to it because it's a guy talking. It's a guy, it's storytelling. I suppose, yeah, basically I suppose, if I just started by saying this, it's the storytelling tradition in Ireland that makes you relate to it. Yeah, yeah you mentioned there about the gangster. You know, like the way the big controversy in the States is that it influences people. It causes them to be gangsters. Do you think that if you oh, no, do that, it that's, here, that's an anti if you listen to N NWA here, do you think it causes you to want to go get a gun and shoot someone? No, I want you to call us and tell Easy E to write better lyrics, I think, but, um, <laughs> you know, maybe send him a pencil rather than a bullet. But um, no, no, uh, I mean, God knows it doesn't. I mean, you had a, I, I know where that, that censorship thing probably in the market's coming, like, you remember the Judas Priest controversy? You know, like kids are supposed to have done whatever, just listening to it. No, it's a fear. It's a fear of the black man. It's a fear of anybody articulating himself. That's what the fear of rap is. Okay, now on top of that, you'll get exploitation. You'll probably get black exploitation in rap, as you did, let's say, in the films kind of thing, you know. Um, sort of white, you know, you hear the far side, you rap and work for the white man, you know. And, you know, you hear white people say, yeah, there's, there's some, I mean, there's good raps and bad raps, you know. What, how are House of Pain? Like, what do you personally think of House of Pain? House of Pain are... Well, it's hard to think of House of Pain. It's probably been unfair to them you know, since I met them and, you know, I found them great guys. But I, if it wasn't for mugs, like you say, uh, I find... Musically, it's good. You know, it's good. Um, but How they present themselves as Irish. Oh, yeah, well, I think they're getting away from that now. I, I don't think they're they're getting away for like Everlast is right to think that everybody else has got it uh, everybody else I think it's unfair really to, to hang them on it I mean you have blood of Abraham right that's a Jewish sort of Jewish thing um, Italian American rap and stuff like that it's just their neighborhood thing it's just a logo it's just a thing the media blew it out as usual you know okay let's talk about rap in general in Ireland how many groups are there now rap groups oh I can think of I would know personally, Scary Era, which are, it starts in, it starts in the with Scary Era. Uh, really good guys, Ghost and Jay, and um, Death Squad, they're just uh, guys I met. But if you go to... They're a all from Dublin? They're all from Dublin, yeah. But, um, well, Scary Era, there'd be guys in Tullamore. But you find out, I find, you look around here and you see some walls. I know back there, someone does it. <laughs> Someone said there's a guy back there who raps in a couple of in, in a couple of towns, you know. Uh, so it'll come up, you know. Okay, for rap, when you want to hear a rap on the radio in, in Ireland, how do you get it? Is there a rap sell, show every you, day? You sell your radio when you buy a tape recorder. You don't hear rap, no. Uh, you would hear pop rap, um, and the underground thing. If you want to hear rap, you'd probably go to a scary air gig, listen to the music. Is there many form. gigs? Rap, uh, no, rap clubs. There's not a lot, but I mean, Ice T comes to town. He comes to town a bit with with Body Count, sold out immediately. Sold out within two hours. I anyway, mean, Public Enemy came years ago, and packed a club immediately. Word of mouth. So any rap group would come here and sell out. Definitely, yeah. Well, maybe yeah. I'll bring some over. Yeah, the more the merrier, you know. We'll go back with them. <laughs> what do you think the future of uh, Irish rap is? The future of Irish rap, it won't be seen as Irish rap. It'll be seen as an Irish art form. You won't be able to hang on, you know. We're coming from hip hop, but it'll be, it's more than hip hop in the end, you know. It's, it's going to be positive, you know. But like, I grew up and I think it's fantastic to see rap, you know, make these strides out, you know. And so these kids come up, they take it for granted, you know. 
they, they see stuff like BDP's fourth album as the first rap album, the kind of thing. They don't believe this is underground. I'm looking now for old jazz. I'm looking for old funk, you know? Um, I come across in the last couple of years, I come across groups like The Meters. I wouldn't have looked for that if I hadn't heard rap. Um, it's a learning thing. Uh, so people are going to, young kids are going to go up now and discover, let's say, a nation of millions in a few years, and you know, it's, it's going to work like that. There's no going back. It's all about your salary. I never showed you my raw fusion t-shirt. Show it to me. Let's see. When you beat, I used to drive around Dublin, which is the biggest city in Ireland, pumping to throw your hands in the air. For months we didn't know who it was, so I apologise. Now I know who it is, you know. And I'm still in the middle of the country now. You hear dogs, there's cows, there's sheep, there's everywhere here. But it's still throw your hands in the air. <laughs> Got to get some trim.